All right, guys, we're back. Today we're going to be talking about Satoshi, the author of the famous Bitcoin white paper. And we're going to talk about the problem that he's created that maybe he didn't know he was going to create when he created the Bitcoin network. Uh, we're going to talk about the energy problem that the Bitcoin network has created and perhaps some solutions that might be uh, relevant to solving that problem. So today with me again is uh, Phil. Hey, um, everybody. Uh, our corporate development uh, lead. We have a title for you now, so that's cool. And uh, Dip is our CTO. And I'm John Belazer, CEO of Saluna. Again, uh, we're going to be talking about energy. So to start, let's frame the energy problem, I thought. Um, today, the Bitcoin network, depending on which source you look at, uh, consumes a tremendous amount of energy. And cryptocurrencies in general, as a, as a group, uh, is consuming a considerable amount of energy. But uh, uh, most of the resources quote Bitcoin uh, specifically because it's the largest network. And uh, you guys are going to fact check me here. 71 terawatt hours yep. per year? That's right. That's a lot. That is a lot. How do you even put that in context? What's 71 terawatts? Like what, what, what would be equivalent to that it's like 10 percent of china right yeah fact check yeah. that as well 10, yeah 10 of china. what i've seen is uh what i've seen is if bitcoin was a was a country it would be the 41st country behind chile or something That's like right. that long skinny country yeah unbelievable yeah so what are we going to do about that that's unsustainable well first maybe we should talk about why does bitcoin consume so much energy that's a good question what, that's a good point what part in the network consumes so it's so we have a network, nodes, we've talked about this in the past. Right. Uh, it's kind of like the internet, it's kind of not. Does it consume as much electricity as the rest of the internet? I was actually just thinking about that. I wonder what the internet consumes right. as an energy. Right. You know, or like... Uh, or other equivalent sort of computing sources. Yeah, like yeah. what is Yeah, what is, what is What's all the e-commerce websites we go to? For right? example, yeah. Um, Netflix. What does Netflix use? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but the, probably, answer, probably the answer is that Bitcoin is comparable to them because right. of how energy intensive its uh, uh, computing is. So, Dip, do you want to talk about what makes uh, Bitcoin and the net securing the network so energy intense? Yeah, I, I think that um, the way I always thought about it, because it's hard to kind of put this in a, it's hard to put this in context because it's never existed before, mm -hmm. right? And so the way I always thought about it was, um, you know, when you think about Bitcoin, what it's trying to do is replace trust with math. Yep. Right? Like human trust with, right. with math, right? And right now that math is done in what some would consider the most pure form. And so they didn't optimize the algorithms mm. to create this distributed ledger, the blockchain, uh, for energy optimization. Right. right. But right. at a more basic level, what is the process that's securing the network that requires so much energy? Oh, okay. Oh, Got it's, you. It's, it's just mining, hashing. Right? Yeah, it's mining. Yeah. 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 Right. So it, what happens with So Bitcoin, what is mining? Yeah. So mining is basically um, a computational function. It's doing math. Right. right? And it's doing it at such a fast rate. And right. the Bitcoin network has grown exponentially, and that grows the energy. But exactly like Phil said, what Bitcoin at its very core, because it's so pure, is this one algorithm called the SHA-256 algorithm. And, right. you know, the way that mining works is through what is commonly referred to as brute force. Right. Or others would consider as trial and error. So what these computers do is just consistently run this mathematical equation right. until they guess something. Right. Right. And as a result, it consumes a lot of energy. And the and bigger it gets, the more it consumes. And we've got a great paper on our website that explains this. But fundamentally, right. the SHA algorithm is being used by these computers to crack a computer puzzle that the network provides to those machines. Right. And that computer puzzle is designed to uh, determine a number that's going to be used to seal each of the blocks. Correct. And the only way that to, to, to figure that number out is to basically guess the number. So it's like guessing a combination of a very hard lock. Uh, and these computers are racing the, to, to guess that combination. And in the process, they're burning a tremendous amount of energy because it's such a complicated uh, problem. The guesses are very, very large in number. Uh, and so it's a race, right? You've got these mining machines there. Uh, it's gotten so... Um, uh, you know, so challenging and competitive that 
specialized processors have come out to to to, to focus on this, right? Yep. And, and uh, 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 there's this um, there's this great book called uh, Bitcoin Gold that talks about sort of the genesis of all of this and how this one guy figured out how to use a gaming chip to do mining, and then he says, "Hey, this is pretty cool," and then that sort of spawned this whole. Uh, generation of technological technological investment to 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 um, to solve this problem in the network, right? Uh, but as a result, it's it's created entire industries. Um, the network has gotten big, and entire you know industrialization of this stuff has hit the network to a point where uh, the amount of computing energy that's being put into the network is increasing over time, and as a result, is burning a lot of energy. Yeah, and so what I wanted to talk a little bit about t- today is, what are we going to do about that? Right. That's unsustainable, right? So if you've got this network that's continuing continuing to grow, um, so there's been lots of discussions about how to solve some of those problems, and so I wanted to talk a, a few a, a bit about those different uh, uh, approaches, and also maybe sort of come up with a little uh, model for like you know how effective we think that that particular uh, solution is going to be. And, you know, is it like a near-term solution? Is it a long-term solution? That sort of thing. Right. So I'm going to throw a few out there. Um, I'll, I'll throw them out. We'll, we'll just start talking about them. Okay. So we, we, we were just talking about mining. Why don't we start with that? So there's this whole concept that uh, more efficient miners, which basically means more efficient equipment technology, that, that, that compute power that's doing the, those puzzles will solve the energy problem. If you add more efficient, you know, systems to the network, That'll reduce the amount of energy burn. Who who wants to take that? Who wants to start? So, yeah, I mean that one's that one's easy, and that won't solve the problem because if you go back to, I think it's important to understand how mining works. It's adversarial. Right. It's zero sum. So three of us are each guessing. The first of us to guess the right number to p- find the lottery number gets the reward, and what that does is it helps secure the network. That's the genius of Satoshi. He said. I'm going to make all of these people essentially play a lottery where they're trying to guess a number, guess a number, guess a number. And what will happen is if someone tries to put an invalid block onto the blockchain because of our number guessing algorithm, we'll invalidate that block. And right. that block won't be accepted onto the blockchain. Um, but what happens is it also becomes an arms race, right? So I want better equipment so I can guess numbers faster. Right. And if... I can get more efficient miners or I can get low energy consumption. So if you think about hashing power to the amount of power it consumes, right. if I can improve that ratio, then m- the amount of hashing power I bring to the network will stay the same, but my power consumption will drop. Right. That doesn't work though, because you still have more power that you can bring on and you're going to bring that on. And then what will happen is just the total hash rate of the network will go up and then the energy will follow it. Just to build on what uh, Phil was talking about, the mm-hmm. equation auto adapts. Right. Right. So as more and more computers come on, it gets harder to guess. Right. And so it doesn't matter if you have the most efficient right. chip. You still you now have to perform more calculations with a more efficient chip. So right. Some energy. So translating that to our, our blockchain Bitcoin novices, let's say. So if you. <clears throat> the network is designed such that it can sense how much computing power is on the network to try to do these puzzles. And uh, Satoshi was uh, smart enough to realize that uh, computing power would improve because it always has, right? You've got Moore's Law. And uh, as more computing power came onto the network for whatever reason, it's just a sheer number or just in- improvement in technology, the network would readjust such that a block is only added to the blockchain every 10 minutes. Exactly. Like and when, so, yeah. so if you, in, so what you're saying is, is if you add more efficient miners, uh, meaning they use less energy, that actually drives the interest in using those miners more, which will add more computing power to the, to the network, right. which will then increase the amount of miners that I need to, 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 to get added to the network and they're, therefore burn e- electricity more. So that and that's already probably... Happened. Uh, exactly. that's, that's already we're already Sorry, seeing that we've already seen it yeah you saw so, when GP, so you mentioned digital gold earlier right? right when the shift from CPU which is how people used to mine that's a normal computer chip CPU right. sw- shifted to GPU which is the video card yeah then the network had to adjust as a that's result right. because right. it was an exponential increase in, right. in com- uh, computing power thanks for correcting me the name of the book is digital gold yeah what did you say I said bit gold I think oh okay <laughs> alright so let's label that one that's probably a low a low return on investment, if you will, from a, from solving the problem. Yeah. 
And uh, maybe in the short term, like very, very short term, it sort of reduces, but then eventually the, it, it catches back up with itself and then it's, it's not very, very, very valuable. Yeah, and then I think the important framework there to remember is it's not, uh, so, and a more efficient miner would be a miner that brings the same amount of computing power for less electricity right. or for reduced costs, but it's not the, the amount of computing power in the network's dynamic. So it That's can right. go up and down, it doesn't matter. Right. So if the you network work, has no yeah. limit on the number of peers can be added, yep. removed at any time. Yep. So that doesn't matter. Got it. Uh, another idea that has been presented is this concept of proof of stake. Yep. Let's go to that one next. So uh, uh, the basic concept is, uh, if I'll begin, is that the Satoshi network has this consensus model, right? And the consensus model is such that everybody guesses the puzzle, uh, whoever guesses, whoever wins, tells everybody, "Hey, I, I found I found the nonce that that uh, uh, solves the puzzle." Uh, everybody checks that nonce, and then if 51% of the the participants agree, then that nonce is chosen, the block is added, the validation c- completes, etc. Um, so, is proof of stake doing the same thing? Is it different? So, uh, I, I I like this one because uh, I have a very clear view on proof of stake. Yeah. What and is it, first of all? So, yeah, okay, it's good. So, proof of work, like you mentioned, was created. And again, Bitcoin was designed to be pure from a decentralization. It's supposed to be simple. It's supposed right. to be elegant. Mm-hmm. Um, but as you mentioned, the energy use has gone way up. So, a lot of people are trying to figure out a way to reduce the number of computations needed to update the block. Right. While still maintaining the integrity of the network. Right. And the way they're doing that is creating... Of the this, ledger. Of the ledger, of the ledger. Yep. yeah. And the way they're doing that is by creating um, this model called proof of stake where, you know, instead of every computer having one vote or every piece of math having one vote, right. people who have more coins or more stake in the network mm. ultimately get more say in how that vote happens. Interesting. And, and as a result, their vote scales, right? So like... In theory, let's just say I own 20% of Bitcoin network. Right. If I vote one way, in theory, I should vote the same way for all 20. So that's, mm-hmm. that's kind of how the, the proof of stake mindset is. It's like, it's almost like compression. <laughs> it's hmm. like trying to compress the amount of, uh, the amount of information you need to, to update the block. Could have now, is there, is there mining in for proof of stake? So you've got these anointed peers, right? You talked about based on your stake. But are you still doing puzzles? Because that, that seems to be what drives the energy usage, It seems right? like you're not. I, I think that there's, there's a couple of different versions floating around out there that I've seen, but it seems like you're not using a, a mining. So it's not a guessing brute force algorithm. I see. Another metaphor that I've heard is like, if we're all sitting at the table, um, we're all the processors. We'll still call them miners here. We're the miners yeah. on, on the proof of stake network. And the way we're able to join the network is by staking our coins. We take... We right. Take the coins we have, we put them on the table, and if we do, if we're a bad actor, and the net fifty-one percent of the network thinks we're a bad actor, we'll burn the coins, and that is the incentive to uh, uh, for us to behave. And then yeah, that was ha- gonna be my question. So right. you got these guys. I mean, the guy who has twenty percent, he can say the right. blockchain looks so, whatever he wants. You know, so, it looks- so he, that's his. He, that's the forcing mechanism to cr- uh, encourage him to behave properly. Right. Um, and then what would happen is a person would be elected. To process all the transactions, Got and it. then everybody else just sits at the table and watches, and basically make sure they agree. And right. Math checks the transaction clearing. Um, there's so many technical issues. I, I don't even know all of them, but I, I know that one of the technical issues is how do you elect somebody in a way that if you know you're going to be elected, you could stake less or something, and you can right. you can still be a bad actor. And the other thing is, from an economics perspective, <clears throat> the people sitting around the table have a new incentive whereas in in mining your incentive is to it's adversarial and mm-hmm. it's zero sum and only one person can win the block and everything right. the competition uh, actually creates this sort of uh, more balanced democratic exactly uh, relationship between the peers it's right? a checks and balances yeah. system yeah but with staking um the incentive is for the people sitting around the table to c- collude with one another right, right. and then mess up with everybody else on the Because you want to protect the value right. of the currency that you have and that sort of thing, I would imagine. Yeah. So over the long term, I, I think the point is that you take away the brute force part of the algorithm and then it becomes uh, much so less long energy term, you get, Yeah, you get less energy consumption. Yes. But then you probably lose the integrity of the, the original vision of, of, of a decentralized network and that is to 
uh, uh, to be truly decentralized. I think you create some incentive one problems. Vote. Yeah. Yeah. Your incentives are not like to keep the way. network yeah. balanced because mm. if if I, if you're 20 and I'm 20 and he's 20, mm. we could say, what if all three of us work together and then right. So got it. So what about um, what about labeling that one? So so proof of stake probably has. It sounds to me like some 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 pretty medium to high benefit from an energy perspective, energy right. usage perspective. Uh, but it's probably a longer term thing because there's some serious algorithmic and uh, incentive challenges that need to be considered, right? Right. And there's probably a lot of details like you've got to you've got to figure out how did, can anyone become one of these anointed uh, you know people that can right. vote, uh, peers that can vo- vote based on accumulation of a certain amount of coin and and what's your incentive to be that? Right. Right. Versus just using the service, I would imagine. Um, okay. The next one is focused around these new, these new, these new, these new code software that's being built on top of the existing networks, like let's say blockchain. Um, I, you know, my favorite example is Light, Lightning Network. Right. You guys want to take a stab at what Lightning Network is? Go ahead. Um, okay. So yeah, Lightning Network, as I understand it. So w- Let's back up a second. One of the um, major limitations of Bitcoin as a cryptocurrency is that the ledger itself only updates every 10 minutes, Mm -hmm. right? So if in theory, if I want to buy a cup of coffee or buy something that requires faster impact, it's hard to do that. Okay. So the Lightning Network was created for two reasons. One, to increase that speed, but also allow more transactions through. Right. Yeah, I've heard this comparison between the Visa Network and the Bitcoin Network, right? Bitcoin's in the hundreds and Visa Networks like thousands of, of transactions, hundreds of thousands. you know, hundreds of thousands of, 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 of transactions per second. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So exactly. it's a whole difference. Like if Bitcoin supposed to, is, is to become ubiquitous, it has to, you know, reach the level of these large networks That's like correct. a Visa or MasterCard network, that sort of thing. Right. And by the way, that wasn't a plug for Visa or MasterCard. It was just, uh, <laughs> we're not. Yeah, we're not yeah. associated. Yeah. But uh, I think the key with, uh, with, with this type of math, though, is that it actually uses more energy. Right. Because you're still doing the other Bitcoin stuff. You're just adding efficiency on top at the expense of another. But you're adding another computing layer. That's right. So what do happened? you actually add? The, do you actually put the transactions back into the the way I understood it is you, um, you 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 perform the transaction. So we set up sort of like this this smart contract between us. We perform a bunch of transactions. And then at the end of the at the end of that, you know, vet, you know, volley of transactions, uh, whatever's left, like the net balance in our accounts, that gets put to the to the network. Right. Um, so another term so, is off chain. Yeah. So, so like we can do chain. transactions off chain, and then we go no, back back and right. put them on record. chain. So let's think about that. So th- th- does that re- reduce energy? Your point is that it does not, because uh, if you do the off off chain transaction, that gets you to thousands of transactions, but then you still put back hun- about the same order of transactions back to the network. Right which still requires mining right. and therefore doesn't reduce the energy. Right. It might be more efficient uh, in the long run than some other methods of implementing faster transactions. Right. Yeah. But I'm not sure that it's helping anything. Well, right. No, right. No, no, well, maybe no, no, the no. chain just doesn't get as long. Like if you put every transaction on the chain, it would get really long. Right, right. And it would take a long time to clear them. But if you're doing them off chain, just putting the net result of that, your chain grows at, let's say, you know, relatively the same speed. But then the work required to process validate and secure the chain hasn't changed no it's not right the the problem uh the energy consumption problem created by mining is not because of the transactions on the network right it's created because of the mining problem and the incentives that miners right. have right. so um and in, the value of the currency right? right yeah so in my view it's it's uh you're not doing anything to change the incentives that miners have they would mine Transaction revenues for them is very little relative to their mining revenue. So, mm. so they would mine regardless of if there were any transactions on the network. Ultimately, I think you, if the cryptocurrencies are going to be successful, that's going to need to happen because that's what's going to drive the value is the application of those currencies to some new ecosystem, I would think, right? Um, and, you know, looking at, looking at um, another industry, well, one of, one, of the, one of the ones I think, I think really... I, I think really, uh, I hope goes away is, uh, is, you know, when you buy a house, there's like this, this title company, 
And when you buy a house, you know, you, 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 you have all these, all these line items of things you got to write checks for. And I hate writing those checks. And why is a title company? Right. Like, why do I need title insurance? Like, I don't get that. I'm sorry, title insurance people watching this podcast, but yep. uh, that could be completely eliminated. And there's a lot of those and there's a lot of people there. Um, you think that'll reduce energy, Phil? More than 50 terahashes of, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's like, I, I just think that you, you, you have to make so many assumptions. Could I imagine a future state where electric, right. there's less electricity being used? Sure. Yeah. But can I, can I say that that's going to happen? Right. It's it more does, abstract. Than it's so abstract. And then you also have to say, what's, what is the cryptocurrency that's going to win? Because right now you have Bitcoin, which is a very pure, uh, a block every 10 minutes, this, this, right. this. And you have Ethereum, which is trying to run smart contracts on it. And then you have the next gen of those trying to do even more, uh, you know, right. distributed computing. Right. I don't know if, a, like, I'm perfectly happy to spend my dollar without knowing that by spending my dollar, I helped uh, move an abacus a little bit, right? I don't, right. I don't need to know. Right. So I don't know that uh, for a currency to be successful and to get a large footprint, it needs to, it needs to uh, do a lot, of, a lot of things. In fact, that's contrary to what I feel, which is that it, it should probably be simple and easy to understand. Right. So how would you handicap this particular concept? I mean, it feels a little abstract to some yeah, extent. But is. I think blockchain is going to be adopted I don't know if it's, I don't know how much energy is going to reduce. I don't. Right. I mean, I, I think that based on this concept of applications yeah, is what you're saying. It's hard to say. Yeah. So, so, you know, I, I think what might be helpful would be to sort of think through some sort of framework that would cause you to think differently about, uh, you know, this phenomenon of energy consumption. Right. right? I mean, one, one perspective is to look at network effects right? Uh, Satoshi created a network effect that essentially is driving uh, uh, compute or nodes to the network to increase the network so they, they, they can increase uh, the supply of the currency, which can be used for different applications and ultimately drives value in the currency. And then that just drives that, that whole potential. But then over time, te technological innovation and changes in the ecosystem itself, to your uh, Malthus example, uh, could fundamentally start a new effect, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the way I've thought about this is essentially as follows. So difficulty is growing and growing and growing and growing, right, exponentially because of two effects. One, right now, miners are coming to the network at a very, very rapid rate, mm -hmm. and miners' technology is improving exponentially. It's following Moore's Law and comput computational power is doubling and doubling and doubling. But let's hold that constant because we're going back to the energy problem. And the energy problem right. says hashing power, hash, like I'm putting electricity in and then whatever hashing power I get at, we'll say it's state of the art. So regardless of whatever uh, changes in the ability to hash comes out, uh, you know, I'm still going to put in the same amount of electricity. Right. And so really what that becomes then is a story of miners getting bigger and more miners coming onto the network, getting footprint. And that's what's driving this exponential growth that we're seeing right now in mm -hmm. electricity. Mm-hmm. But at some point, difficulty will reach a, uh, a, a point where, uh, you know, all the miners, all the low-hanging fruit has been taken. And, you know, everybody who could, get, could or would get on the network is already on the network. And difficulty is the adjustment to all of this compute coming on. That's right. Network. Yep. Okay. Right. And so... Makes the puzzle harder. Exactly. Basically. Yeah. So those miners are all on. And then the next margin, marginal miner, the one, the one miner, he says, I could spend this much money to buy chips and start mining, or I could spend this money on doing this other thing. And, right. and he's reached this point where he's saying, well, you know, the margins, I, I don't think I'm going to come. They're not the enough network. for me to right. do this versus something else. Right. And so then what you'll see is a leveling off because the margins have reached an equilibrium point, maybe in the past when Bitcoin price was at. 18,000 in December, <laughs> you know, we weren't at an equilibrium. Plenty price. of room for There's everybody to exactly come in. Exactly right. right. But now maybe things are getting a little bit tighter and you're going to hit this sort of steady state. Right. And that takes us to network. Of, so that's network effect one, first right. of all. And that's Satoshi's genius because he created this, he created this system that incented a lot of miners to create a, a, a currency right. that was distributed. Mm -hmm. It didn't have a central authority governing it and it was safe, and he created an incentive for those miners to mine on it, and 
we have an incentive to use that network to transact with one another because right. we know all these miners are securing the network. Correct. Right. So that's it becomes this virtuous cycle of more miners are attracted because people are actually using the currency and people right. are more likely to use the currency than other cryptocurrencies because um, there's so many people uh, regulating the network. Right. And that's network effect one. And that's what we're living in right now. And then what I'm saying, and, I, and one can say it's been very successful. I mean, look very, at the size very of unbelievably it. successful. Yeah. I mean, uh, you probably know. beyond Satoshi's expectations. Uh, yeah, I, I think I, it's beyond a lot of people's expectations. Yeah, it's the quickest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you think about the internet, this this came way faster. If it's, you think it's, about it's, computing it's yeah. generally, it, this came way faster. Right. I mean, this this cycle is is at a whole different clip. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what's net, network effect number two? So, network effect number two, in my mind, is when you have this steady state where all the miners who are on probably are on, right? You know, at given a certain price level, and then there's a new incentive, which is all of these miners who built this computing footprint are going to look around and say, "How do I make my network more valuable?" Right. So if if I'm a miner, my incentive is to encourage the network to be more valuable, and that's really another beautiful network effect because then you talk about getting people to move onto the blockchain and say, right. let's create all these applications and let's do all That's this. Right. And right. you already see some organizations doing things like Increase this. Increase the value proposition of the network itself and by creating applications that use the, the value of the network, exactly. use the currency itself. Exactly. exactly. Yep. And, then, and then you see a uptake in Bitcoin, or not Bitcoin, but blockchain adoption. Right. And so then, so this is, this is Malthus uh, all over again in my mind because you know, your productivity, well, in, in Malthus, the, the graph's a little different. Productivity took off right. and birth rates declined. This one's the inverse. Uh, the growth in electricity is going to decline while blockchain adoption is going to take off. Right. So it's kind of like an invert of the same graph. So to participate in, in, and be part of this network in network phase two, you can't be a hobbyist miner no. anymore. You have to be an industrial infrastructure company. That's and right. And that's what relates to us. We're we're going to get into the, the business of producing energy. Yep. So we kind of, you know, we don't, we don't add to the problem, if you will, because we're going to develop our own energy. Uh, and then we're going to add compute to the network that's uh, at utility scale and much more efficient, which can add to this second phase where the network is much more valuable and it needs the support of a much larger security framework and compute framework to support all these applications. That's and right. That's, that's what Saluna is about. And if you think about it, this is what happened to cloud and web hosting. That's right. right. The that's same, exactly same right. idea. Little, little people you yeah. know, had their own and now had their it's own AWS is, is, is moved to these exactly. large yes. uh, industrial players. And so, yeah, you could consider Saluna almost the AWS of the blockchain in yeah. the future. Yeah, that's right. So we've run out of time, guys. This has been a great discussion. Absolutely. Um, we, we agreed more on this than, than, than I thought we would. Yeah, I think we, uh, yeah. Not we, don't know, we don't always agree on things, <laughs> but uh, I think we were very cordial. Uh, but I think we got to the essence that, um, you know, we, the essence is I think the, the, the world needs to wait to see as this ecosystem develops how all these changes and what the role of energy will play right. in, that, in that, that, that next wave exactly. of development. Rather than go crazy about the problem, um, uh, wait for the problem to have a role in the future future place, and at, and 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 uh, be innovative around how you play a role as an infrastructure player. Yep, absolutely right. All right, Love thanks it. for thanks for joining us, folks. We'll see you next time.